Oi, minha gente, tudo bem? Boa tarde para quem está aqui nos assistindo ao vivo agora em mais um encontro dessa nossa preparação do Festival Infinito que a gente está fazendo para uma forma de convidar vocês para participar com a gente do todos os bastidores. Para você ver que o Festival Infinito até sábado, 5 horas da tarde, num dia maravilhoso, a gente está aqui produzindo coisa para vocês e tudo mais. Então é uma alegria ter vocês aqui. É, essa conversa que a gente vai ter hoje é, é super importante. É um tema que eu venho pensando há muito tempo, desde a primeira vez que eu conheci a Bridget nos Estados Unidos. Eu assisti uma, uma apresentação dela ao vivo lá em São Francisco. E eu achei a pauta, a fala dela incrível, a pauta é importante, então é sobre isso que a gente vai conversar hoje. Então, a Bridget, é Bridget Hempstead, ela é a fundadora e CEO da Sierra Sister, que é uma organização afro-americana de câncer de mama, que fornece apoio, educação e advocacia exclusivamente para questões de saúde e mama das mulheres pretas. A narrativa pessoal e a abordagem prática de Bridget educaram e empoderaram uma comunidade de mulheres cuja saúde havia sofrido anteriormente sobre a influência de estereótipos culturais e preconceitos raciais. No espírito do ativismo que impulsiona a Sierra Sister e a perspectiva de autocapacitação que ela fornece, o trabalho de Bridget também inclui o desenvolvimento de um currículo de saúde de mama baseado em evidências para os membros da comunidade compartilharem. Lembrando que essa fala agora vai ser em inglês, sem legenda, sem tradução, é, mas depois a gente vai trabalhar nesse conteúdo e no festival, é, daí ele vai ser legendado e vai fazer parte de um painel onde a gente vai ter uma discussão bem bonita com outros convidados e convidadas, tá bom? Então vamos lá, eu vou chamar a Bridget para vir aqui. Hello, Bridget! Hello, Tom! Welcome. Welcome to Festival Infinito. It's an honor to have you here with us in Brazil. We were talking there that we need to plan your visit to us in a pretty short period, uh, like not long from here, because we need to see each other. And uh, so it's a pleasure to have you here um, to give us what you have the most precious, that is your knowledge and your time. Especially on October, that you know you are really busy, busy for the Pink Month, and also on a Saturday. And I know that you have an event also tomorrow. So thank you so much. Uh, I'm really thank anxious you. and happy to hear what you have to us. Thank you, thank you, Tom. Thank you, everyone, and um, I appreciate you even tuning in to hear some of the words that I would have to say to you dealing with my own journey. Let's see here. There we go. This is a picture of me when I was 35. <clears throat> I was diagnosed with breast cancer on my 35th birthday. At that time, there were no black women that you could see um, surviving breast cancer. Unfortunately, I was told by my doctor, you don't need to get a mammogram. It doesn't happen for black women. Come back in 10 years. Immediately, I started advocating for myself and I demanded a mammogram, which led me to the diagnosis of breast cancer on my 35th birthday. I didn't let that discourage me. I started an organization called Sierra Sisters. Sierra is an African word that means knowing. If you have the knowledge, you have the power to fight against the effects of breast cancer and actually the effects of any cancer. Knowledge is power. So I began a quest to educate our community around breast cancer that's affecting black women. The reason my doctor was telling me it doesn't affect black women, she said she was taught that in school. Unfortunately, it was a death sentence for, to every black woman if she was diagnosed with breast cancer and the doctors ignored them. While over rates of breast cancer and black and white women are about the same, black women are 20 to 40% more likely to die from breast cancer. We know that these issues arise because racism is real. 
and it happens within the healthcare system as well. If you don't know how to advocate for yourself, if you don't have a doctor that is standing with you, you could fall through the cracks. As Sierra Sisters continues to evolve, we go to office visits with patients and set them up to make sure that they're seeing an oncologist who will hear them, give them the correct treatment. So we don't over only go into the offices, into the clinics and the hospitals, we go into the streets. The children come with us, families, as we spread the word and giving knowledge about cancer, about the risk factors, about empowering yourself. <clears throat> I wanna share a story about Miss Bonnie. She's an incredible Sierra sister, diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer. Unfortunately, her doctors did not share that she was metastatic. You need to know your status. And if your doctor is not communicating with you, read your records. Bonnie had came to see her sisters from Alaska. And the first that she knew about, about um, metastatic breast cancer was when I looked at her records and was able to, um, I was able to get her into a doctor that was able to treat metastatic breast cancer. She didn't know anything about clinical trials and she didn't know that she only had a short amount of time before she was to leave this world. So upon her um, gaining the knowledge of this, she said, I wish I would have known about Sierra Sisters before I was even diagnosed because she would have been able to gain the knowledge. We were able to successfully get her into a clinical trial. However, the clinical trial did work, but it was too late for her. She left with strength. She left in all glory and she was not ready to say, I am upset or mad. She said, when I leave, I'm leaving with a bang. And she did. <clears throat> this is me singing the national anthem for the Seahawks game. And I show this picture because sometimes doctors you may deal with may try to take your power from you. And when I was first diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer nine years ago, a doctor told me, oh, you'll never sing again. And you'll die in a year. That was nine years ago. Don't ever let someone give you your time when your time is up. Live the fullest until it is time to go. Don't spend your time fretting and worry about dying I would say be prepared, but don't stop living. Don't ever stop living. And don't let someone put you in a category to make you stop living. I wanna say two years ago, I was um, given a wrong injection by a nurse and that injection threatened my life and how it threatened my life because I would have to go off a treatment for 10 months, which is very dangerous for anyone who's metastatic. That 10 months delay caused the cancer to grow. And this is the first time ever that I've had to go and, be, and receive chemo, a very harsh chemo. And so, I didn't walk in this with fear. I embraced the change and I embraced the strength that I have. So I would encourage you to embrace the change with the strength that you have. You will find that some things that may seem very scary to you 
are not scary when you have the knowledge. So when my hair started falling out, I had a hair going away party as we do for a lot of women. And I embraced this change and I embraced my bald head. It's kind of cool. So I wanna thank you for listening to this presentation. And you see there, I love my grandbabies and she's fascinated with the top of my head. Mwah. <laughs> That's so cute, your grandchild. That's really cute. Uh, thank you, thank you so much for, for your words. And, uh, um, and the first thing that I, that I wanna say is first, congratulations for what you do. Secondly, thank you. Uh, it is, it is really, how can I say that? Um, because you, you took from your pain, from your challenge, you got, you found maybe your life purpose. And I'm talking from my side also, because what I do, it is based on the challenge that I had in my life that uh, uh, the, the people that I love that died. And then that's why I start this movement in Brazil. I wanna hear a little bit from you about this, from this challenge, from your pain, your life, you find something to fight and that's your life purpose. Am I correct? Absolutely. That's what You're correct. I was always talking to women about empowering their self. So it became natural. You may have something that's natural within you that you haven't explored outside the box. I want to encourage you, think outside the box. Start writing some things down. You know, when I um, was faced with breast cancer, the first thing I grabbed was a paper plate. And I started writing. I wrote that I didn't see black women. I wrote that they don't understand breast cancer. I wrote down knowledge. So I had all these notes that turned into Sierra sisters. That's beautiful. And uh, were you aware of any kind of movement related to black women, African-American women in the US or not? In, in, in nowadays, is Sierra sister the only one Back then, there were not any black organizations. I know now that there, there, are, there, are, there are many. Now there are many. Yes. So that you, you, you started that with your movement, then other movements I, started. I don't know if I actually started that, but it was necessary for the survival of the black women. This was in 1996. February 23rd, 1996. You know, sometimes a movement can start with just one voice. Someone telling their friend, a neighbor, a stranger in the street, do you know about cancer? Are you educated? Do you know how to talk to your doctors? Um, do you know how to deal with the fear that might come? Diagnosed with her. So it's about being aware, being equipped, being educated, and also having evidence-based information. Yeah, knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. There's just so much that you can do and if you're trying to create a circle of strength for your own community, show them how to be strong. Show them your strength. When uh, we were talking before, when I invited you to, for this speak, I told you that here in Brazil, 56% of the population is black, 56. And I know the U.S. We are, I think, thirteen. 
but in Brazil, 56. And I just learned when I started talking to you that we have a, a, a movement starting already, just like yours in the north of Brazil. Very good. Yeah, but it's only one. And I know they are, I'm aware, I know big movements that do this in Brazil, but not with this specific uh, looking to African-American -Amer African women. If you could talk to them, what would you tell them to, to people that are listening? I know that lots of patients, black patients or health professionals and everything, what would you tell them to them start this movement also here in Brazil? Start the movement. Talk to doctors that will support you. You need to have medical professions that are supporting the work that you're doing. Invite them to get involved. Because when you don't have the community and the medical community and the research community together, they're not communicating, they're not talking. Bring them together. Um, bring your supporters because as you have survivors there, there are also a whole network of individuals that don't have cancer, but they're supporting someone. They're supporting their husband, their wife, their mother, their child, their best friend that's going through it. Make sure you gain knowledge by getting information, evidence-based information. You can YouTube and you can Google, but sometime Dr. Google will take you down a road you don't wanna go. So you wanna make sure that you're getting the best advice, evidence-based information, and you are gonna have those myths. Oh, I have this pill to sell you and it'll make you better. Those things do happen. So that's why I wanna say, as you're going down this road, you're gonna have some bumps. You're gonna have some falls. You're gonna have some scrapes, but find that strength within you and keep going. If you're called to do this work, it's not hard work, it's heart work. Yeah, that's beautiful. There is some, uh, we had these conversations already in our movement to talk about this, how the racist bias impact the care. And that's the topic of our meeting today and, and the, or during the festival. Um, and what I learned from uh, some black professionals, uh, health professionals, and also from patients, it is that there are some uh, myths that tell like, oh no, the, uh, uh, this patient, uh, we don't need to give them or to her too much medicine because uh, he doesn't feel the pain or he has a stronger skin uh, and all thicker. the things, a thicker, yes, a thicker skin and all the things. Are these happening there also? It is the same, it is all it like is this. It is happening here. I heard a, I had a nurse say to me, oh, you have really thick skin, so I have to do a different needle. And I'm like, you can't touch me. So it's a reality. It does happen. Um, racism is real. And a lot of the medical professions, unfortunately, feels like, I can't say all of them, but you've got some of those who feel like Black people do not need the same care as any white person. And that's really sad. That's the effects of racism. That's why it's important to find a doctor that is going to work with you, that will partner with you. When you are dealing with a health catastrophic issue, you need to have your health care team intact. And for patients, like for black patients, because you just said something, you just gave us, gave her, gave them a tip, like, don't touch me. Uh, like when you feel that this is happening, you already gave some information, don't touch me. What else would you tell to a patient 
that is going through this situation that you are already in a very fragile moment and even then you need to protect yourself but what are the signs and how can you protect if you could tell them don't go by yourself if you can help it bring someone with you that's going to take notes doctors are more more um apprehensive to do something out of order when someone is there witnessing their behavior and if they do something out of order, don't be afraid not to call them on it. Let them know. And if it continues, I wouldn't say even if it continues, report it to their high authorities within their institution. They need to know this is happening. You have a voice. You're more powerful than you realize. So it's okay to go and report them. Yeah, that's that's important. It is to like to really go to the doctor already, like prepare, like if this happened or this might happen. So uh, uh, how can I, I react to that? Yeah. And sometimes you may have to fire a doctor and get another one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have the power. This is your team that you're collectively putting together the nurses that you work with, the doctors, physician assistants, the technician. These are your team members that are going to help you get better. Amazing. Uh, somebody's asking here if you have, have you written about your experience? Do you have a book? You, read, you wrote a book or something? It's in process. Oh, you need to let me know when you are ready because then we are going to promote here also because I know people want to read about this. Absolutely. I will do. I will let you know, Tom. Okay. Uh, well, it was amazing. I knew that it, was, it would be a great experience because I heard you talking, but talking with me when with my group and then talking to us, it was much, much more special. Thank uh, you. Um, I'll keep you posted about the impact that your talk gave to us and also uh, I will have this compromise with you about any movement that starts inspired on your work I will share with you and uh, I, will, I will tell about Sierra Sisters for them to also to go there and learn about it and absolutely you need to, yeah, you know, you need to know that your work it is like going to different places, different cultures also. You're inspired yes. by everybody. You know, I do have a training and Tom, you and I can talk about it. Um, doing an actual training to empower your community there. So we could talk about that. Do you want to talk a little bit about this? Tell, tell yeah, me a little bit. Yes. Called Concepts, Community Empowerment Partnerships. And this program, I adapted it for, I, um, I created it for uh, breast cancer. Um, but I also partner with another doctor to adopt it for um, endometrial cancer in black women. And then also I'm adopting it in some other type of cancers. However, because we're talking about breast cancer here, I think that one of the most powerful things is to make sure that um, you know how to talk to your own community. This will empower you to be able to be that voice and knowledgeable about what you're sharing with your community. Yes, that's, uh, yeah, we, we are going to talk. I want to learn more about this and then see how can we bring this to share this knowledge. How can we, what are your how can we adapt to our culture? Uh, what, who can we bring uh, to, to, to see like the, 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 how this is in our culture in Brazil and everything? But that's amazing. Yes, yes. We, you know, um, before we met, Tom, uh, I have a colleague that's here. And um, I told her I wanted to go to Brazil and do some training. This is before you and I met. And so... We were talking about coming there, working with the Minister of Health, and yeah. Yeah. So you know, it, 
Yeah, the universe. Yeah, the universe. It is usually working really well for some things about this kind of work and project. So, yeah, let's make. And this here happen. we go. Yeah, and here we are, and let's make this happen. Let's make it happen. Okay, thank you so much for your talk. Thank for you. Your thank you, everyone. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can like just leave a, a, a last word for everybody that is listening. My wanna... last word, my last words for you is take time to love yourself back to health. You may not feel the best right now, but take that time to love yourself so that you can love your community. And there's a, a last comment here from Katya. Katya Oliveira, she's telling that please tell her how lovely her dress is. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. We are going to close and the, the live transmission now.